Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome to Spiritual Warfare TV. Glad to hear everybody on here. Welcome to Spiritual Warfare TV Bible study and thank you for your support. It's been wonderful this week. <clears throat> um, we have a live stream invite link um, right there in the live comments. I ask you to do that after, you know, I finish and then that way, you know, I can get to people who want to ask questions or want to tell me to go somewhere or want to give me some answers. Cause I can, I can use them. I can, I listen. Hey, this is, I didn't write this. I didn't write the word of God. So my job is to read it and try to understand the best way I can. And if somebody has some answers in, I listen and see where, you know, where I need to go. Um, also the reading source, they have a link right there just in case you want to kind of look at it. We're going to read from there later on. So what are we talking about today? Is but it's the it's called between the book of Malachi and Matthew, like what happened between that time, like when was this, you know, and things like that, and um, you know what what was what was the word of God leading up to in the Old Testament and Malachi? I, I have to say, Mal, book of Malachi is the last book in the Old Testament, and Matthew is the first book. In okay, so that that's how that's situated. Okay, and. Let's go to the scriptures. Let's get this. Um, that's a picture of Greece. So that's a little hint of what we're going to be talking about. You know, so let's get into it. Okay, so the first place that we're going, we're going to go to Daniel. Let's go to Daniel chapter... Eight. Let's get right into it. We're not going to waste any time. So Daniel chapter eight and verse five. And we're going to read it to verse eight, five through eight. That's what we, that's where we're going to read it. So let me put this. Try to put the scriptures up for you guys. There you go. So that's what we're reading right now. Then we're going to skip a little bit okay just putting it there so you guys can either write it down and just know or kind of know where we're going so okay between the book of malachi and matthew that's what we that's what we're focusing on but we're going to go here and there. So Daniel um, 8, Daniel chapter 8, verse 5. Let's see what that says. Okay, there we go. It says, and as I was considering, behold, and he go, how like that, came from the west on the face of the whole earth and touched not the ground. And the goat had a notable horn between his eyes so do this for me guys if you have your bible how like and a he goat came from the west on the face of the whole earth when you're talking about the word of god you know he was focused on jerusalem right so jerusalem is a center now you have north south east west so when you read the word of god you know you know, you can look at the map and see what's on the west. You can look at, you know, what's kind of in the west area, what's in the north, what's in the south, and what's in, you know, what's on the east and what's on the south. So north, south, east, west, east, west. I do it like that. North, south, east, west for me. And so now he said, a he goat. See, the word of God, hey, God, the most high, he speaks to people in their own language. Like, kind of like, this is what you were familiar with, right? And we're going to go into that a little bit. So a he goat came, call it a he goat, came from the west, the west of Jerusalem. That would be more on the islands or like going towards like the Europe, you know, nation like, you know, like Greece, Rome or whatever like that. So. So now in touching not the ground, I like this right here. Touching not the ground, that's kind of like saying he's like, like swift, right? You know, he's so fast that he's not even touching the ground, you know, moving quick. And right here, and, it, and the goat had a notable horn between his eyes. So remember that, had a notable horn. I like that, a notable horn between his eyes. 
Okay, now let's keep going. So we're going to get back to that. I just want y'all to highlight that so you won't forget it. Look, and he came to the Ram. You know, you'll find out who the Ram is, but we're not really focused on the Ram right now. So pretty much I'm getting you a hint. That's another empire. And he came to the Ram that had two horns, which I had seen standing before the river and ran unto him in the fury of his power. Verse 7. Bear with me, guys. The computer's going a little slow. And it says, and I saw him, look right here. And I saw him close unto the realm. So it sounds like a battle, right? And he was moved with, with uh, cola, cola against him. So he smote the ram and break his two horns. So that he go broke the, the two horns of the, of the ram. Look, and there was no power in the realm to stand before him. But he cast him down to the ground and stamped upon him. And there was none that could deliver the ram out of his hand. So that's pretty much saying he conquered. He won that war. Who is he? We'll find that out. And now he now watch, watch this. Therefore, the he goat wax very great. See, the he goat rat wax very, very great. And he and then look, and when he was strong, the great horn was broken. See that? And when he and when he when he became powerful, the great horn was broken. See the word of God speak like that. It's because it's I know people say, why can't you just say it the way? Because at doing it's dangerous during this time. And also, it's not only that, God does not really God is not scared of the people, he created the people. It's that he wants people to know of him. When you begin to know somebody's language and how they speak, you're like, oh, they're trying to say this. You see what I'm saying? You have to get to know them. Look, and for it came up for notable ones. Look, and for it came up for, I like that, for notable ones toward the four winds of heaven. Where are the four winds of heaven? Look, north, south, east, west. Four winds of heaven. So he's saying that great horn was broken. That's that that is the that's the that that was the he goat who waxed very great. You know, now let's let's skip. Remember that. Remember that. So now we're gonna go to 15, okay? 15 to 16. Right here. I just read it like this. And it came to pass when I even I, Daniel, had seen the vision and sought for the meaning. Then behold, okay, there it is. Then behold, right here, there stood before me in the appearance of a man. So Daniel, Daniel don't know. Daniel wanted to know what, what is going on. Think about it. If you're in a captivity, you know, Babylon got, you know, came to Jerusalem, sacked them, you know, and destroyed the city and the temple and all that. See, Babylon is key. Babylon in Genesis, you know, the Tower of Babel, then Babylon came. And then guess what? The Medes and the Persians came afterwards. That is the ram. But we're going to find that. I shouldn't have told you. You know, let me keep reading. So look, there stood before me in the appearance of a man. So the most high is sending Daniel somebody. He's sending him an angel. What angel is it? Let's see. To get, you know, to help him know what's going on at his time. See, everybody, you know, People be thinking like it's strange, you know, you read the Bible, you don't know this and that, you know. I mean, Daniel, <laughs> it took him a while, you know, and the, and the angel had to come to him. So that tell you, prophecy is hard to figure out. Look, and I heard a man's voice between the banks of Eulah. Look, which called and said, Gabriel, see the archangel, Gabriel, look. Or Gabriel, the angel, you know, make this man to understand the vision. See, so he little hey, the God, the Most High wants Gabriel to help to help Daniel understand the vision. Okay, let's go to nineteen. Let's skip to nineteen right here, and he said, "Behold, I will make thee know what shall be in the last end of the ancient nation." So, okay, remember there was something that happened in. Remember, I said Babylon came first. That's why Daniel was with Nebuchadnezzar. So now, you know, think about it. You think, okay, we're going to go. 
you know, Jeremiah said this was going to happen. We're going to go back. And now things are going to be the same as what they used to be. But guess what? You got three, you got another, you got some more empires coming. And you're going to still be under them in captivity. You're going to be slaves to them. I guess that's the way you would say it. Pretty much, you're not going to be the run, the runner of your own will, like your, of your own country. It's going to be others. You see what I'm saying? Look, so look, what shall be in the last end of the, of the Indian nation? For at the time appointed, the end shall be. Okay, so no, well, I should, now here comes the answer. Gabriel is going to give Daniel the answer. How like all, how like all is 20 and 21. The realm which thou saw is the realm which you saw having two horns are the kings of Media and Persia. You know, it could be kings. It could be kings. And then also it's a kingdom. If you have a king, you have a kingdom. So the kingdom of Medes and Persia, who you would call Iran, you know, our Iranian empire, like an Iran empire, Media, Media and Persia, Medes and per Persia, you know. And so now look, the realm, that was the realm. See right here, the realm which you just saw having two horns, Media and Persia. Okay, so now 21, watch this. 21, this is the this is what we want to know because we, we're focusing on this one because this is you know, remember, the, remember the title is what between Malachi and Matthew, between the old testament and new testament. Like what happened between that space, you know. Look, and the rough goat. Is a rough, the rough goat, they call him a rough goat, is the king of Grisha, Grisha which is Grisha, which is Greece, right? But then look, it's going to get more specific. And the great horn that is between his eyes is the first king. Who was the first king of that empire? It was, it was Alexander the Great. It was Alexander the Great. Let me show you a picture right here. Hold on one second. Then I'm going to go back to the scriptures. Okay. So the images, you know, of what Google and I'm just, you know, this is what they would show Alexander the Great. You know, that's what you would typically see. This, this one right here, you know, kind of like is what they kind of you know look at and to talk about alexander campaigns of conquest like he he was remember he said his feet didn't touch the ground you know so now i just wanted you guys to see that real quick let's go back to this right here you know when did alexander the great conquer jerusalem look right here 332 bc so that's before Christ, 332 years <laughs> before that, you know, Jerusalem capital, uh, um, Jerusalem capitulates, um, you know, to Alexander the Great during the six year Macedonian conquest of the empire of Darius the third look of Persia. Remember Medes and Persia? That's the realm. Say, hey. Daniel was given this by the angel. People, don't, man, people, I know people like, man, I just can't believe it. I'm telling you guys, Daniel saw, uh, you know, just like other, just like other, you know, just like people who wasn't speak, you know, didn't know of God, the, the heathens and, the, um, you know, the Gentiles. I'm sure they've seen, you know, and, and, you know, and even the Hamites, they've seen, you know, their fair share of entities. What, what would possess somebody to worship entities that that hard and be so obedient and make sacrifices to them and even even people people that are being sacrificed it got to be something that they have seen right you just don't do that just to do it okay so look so if you have even entities on the other end then you have you know you have an angel fallen angels and then ain't holy angels Look, Jerusalem, you know, um, capitulates, uh, you know, to Alexander the Great during the, the six-year Macedonian conquest of the empire of Darius III of Persia. Look, Alexander's armies, right here, Alexander's armies took Jerusalem 
without complication while traveling to Egypt after the siege of Tari. That's why they have something in Egypt called Alexander. Think about it. You know, um, you know, in 332 BC, watch this. I just thought of this. Alexander in Egypt. First Greek king, um, king there. It should be Ptolemy. It should be Ptolemy. You know, after, uh, well, I guess after, um, after Alexander, look, Alexander III of Macedonia, you know, commonly known as Alexander Great, was a king of the Greek, uh, of the ancient Greek kingdom, um, Macedonia. I'm looking for the city, though, the city of Alexander in Egypt. And Ptolemy. You know, Ptolemy was the next king. You know, this is when they remember the get the goat split into four. And they went, you know, you know, you know, when they said something about the winds of heaven, you know, four winds of heaven, north, south, east, west. So you had four kings all in those places. One was in the north, one was in the south, one was in the east, one when one, one was in the west. They couldn't agree to who they wanted. It's like president. You can't agree to who you want to be the president. So now you got four presidents. I'm just giving y'all an example. In the United States, one in the north, one in the south, one in the east, and one in the west. Because you can't come to terms with one because people are fighting. You know what I'm saying? So they're split in four ways, you know. And I guess everybody went their separate ways, you know. So that's what happened after Alexander the Great, you know, passed away. So look. Alexander gave his general Ptolemy govern, look, governorship of Egypt. He set up his govern, government in Alexandria. After Alexander's death in 323 BC, so he didn't live long after he conquered. You know, remember we read 332. Alexander, he passed away in the young age. Look, Ptolemy intercepted the king's body and buried him in Memphis. They have something in Memphis, um, Egypt. While he built a tomb in Alexander, Alexandria, that would later become a tourist site for the ancient Egyptians. And see that that's it. This is it right here. See that? So, and look what you see right here. That, that you know above that. Look at that eye. <laughs> you know that's that's you see that you see that a lot today. You know so that you know hey, that tells you you know it tells you something. As far as you know how to get down with the symbols and things like that but um but yeah let's go back now let's go back to the scriptures okay okay yeah let's go back to the scripture so let me get off of that i appreciate y'all patience okay so now that's what it said. Look, and the rough goat is the king of Grisha. And the great horn that is between his eyes is the first king. And that will be Alexander the Great. So I had to kind of go into that. And then now, just for the people who forgot, remember it said, um, trying to find that. Where did it say? Yeah, in eight, yeah, verse 8. Therefore, the he goat waxed very, very great. And when he was strong, the great horn was broken, broken. So when he passed away, the great horn, hey, the, the empire was broken, split. Look, and four, it came up, like it came up out of, out, out of it. Look, four notable ones. See, four notable ones toward the four winds of heaven. So that's what I'm trying to say, people. You say how to... The word of God speaks. It's not speaking like, like we would say, well, four kings rose up after Alexander the Great died. You see what I'm saying? You know, this is for, hey, this is for the Israelites right now to know that, hey, this is what's going on. 
you know, it's like a, a code or, or, or talking to get to know the most high, you know. And so now Daniel is getting, you know, Gabriel is giving him even Gabriel is like, you know, I don't understand what's going on. You know, so that yeah, that's it right there. So now. Now, what happened between now? I did all that, which took me about two. Months. <laughs> and now. You know what happened, with, you know, between the book of Malachi and Matthew. So to go there, let's see, you know, we, we're not going to go in between there yet. We got a little history at the, you know, before this, but now we're going to go to Isaiah. Isaiah, I'm going to show you that Isaiah was writing about this. Isaiah was right. And, and even, even, even after Alexander the Great, you know, will come. Isaiah, that's why Isaiah is, you know, Christ is speaking about Isaiah's. Isaiah really imagine now I say this imagine if somebody's talking to their nationality which is a Hebrew Israelites and imagine if a prophet is telling them this you think they're going to take that well even today they wouldn't take it well you see what I'm saying so check this out Isaiah this is where we're going first I'll put it down for you guys to see Right here at the bottom. There you go. Isaiah chapter 61. We're going to read one through nine. So we're going to start with verse one. There it is. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord have anointed. I mean, made holy. Have anointed me to preach good tidings like the good gospel, right? Unto the meek, which is the humble. Look, he have sent me to bind up the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty, that's like freedom, right? To proclaim liberty to the captives, see? To the captives, look, and the opening of, of the prison to them that are bound. Look, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. So a hey, freedom to the captives, to the people who are enslaved, enslaved. But hey, how are you enslaved? You know, are you enslaved, are you enslaved with sin? You know, in a slave, you know, also, you know, you can be a slave physically and mentally. Watch this to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord in the day of vengeance. Uh oh, what did it say? In the day of vengeance of the of our God to comfort all that mourn. So it's going to take vengeance from the from God at this, you know, what Isaiah was talking about at this time, like something to come in order for you to comfort to comfort you, all those that mourn. You know, think about it. They're mourning in captivity, you know, in somebody else's captivity in a, a, another nation. Also, even within that, it could be things set up to where, you know, people are lying. People are telling, you know, are blasphemy against God and telling lies and things like that. So look at this right, right here. To a point unto them the mourn in Zion. See? To give unto them, Zion is Jerusalem. To give unto them beauty, beauty, look, beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mornings. See that? The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That's depression. You know, people say, you know, state of depression. So spirit, your mind of depression or a heaviness that they might be called trees of righteousness. That's why trees are important, symbolic for a lot of people. See? Tree of knowledge of good and evil. See that? Trees of righteousness. Because that means if you have trees of righteousness, that means you have trees of evil. <laughs> Look, the planning of the Lord that he might be glor glorified. See, look right here. Verse 4. And they shall build, look, the old oasis. They shall raise, look, they shall raise up the former desolations. Because, you know, Jerusalem is being destroyed. Look. And they shall repair the waste cities. The desolations of of many generations. So it said many generations. Watch what watch what he says next. And strangers shall stand and feed your flocks. So you stand and feed in the flocks. That means you are the the. That mean you are the the person in charge. Strangers are going to do this. See, people don't want to accept this. You can't fight the Most High. 
this for all nationalities. I'm addressing everybody, all colors and creeds. Look, strangers shall stand and feed your flocks. Now, no, the strangers got to know you know why you have it, because he wants you to have it. It's not that you just took it. Look, and the sons of the alien shall be your plowmen and your vine and your vine dressers. And that's what I'm saying. And the reason I say that, you got to be humble even in even in your stead. Even in even in your time to reign. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, you know, all of it, you know, it should be a, a example of who he's using the, the people who he came to first to exalt, to put to put them up and to bring them back down, <laughs> you know, to humble them. Because see that day, you know, everybody can get caught up in the, you know, glorifying of this flesh. That's why he's saying it's spiritual. Look right here, six. But ye shall be named the priests of the Lord. That's what you, but he's saying, but you, you, you're going to be named the priests of the Lord, even within that, you know, that, that, you know, I guess the control of those strangers. Look, men shall call you ministers of, of your, of our God. Ye shall, look, you shall eat the riches of the who? I got to say this because I know a lot of people don't like when people say that. But I got to say this and highlight this with a special highlighter. Ye, you shall eat the riches of the question mark Gentiles. So you eating the riches of the Gentiles and in their glory shall ye boast yourselves. Look at that right there. Remember, remember that. Oh, you know what? Instead, I, 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 I wouldn't. I wanted to keep reading, but you know what? We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna stop right there and then go right here. I had it for the last end, but hey, I think it would be better for you guys to see it now since we were we're reading in the Old Testament. So Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah, is giving is giving a prophecy. You shall be you shall eat the riches of the Gentiles and in their glory. See, in their glory shall you boast yourselves. It's like you boasting yourselves in the glory and what they have what they what they have accomplished based on what God has given allowed them to do. So now that could be even your even even though you're enslaved, it could be your protection in some type of way because. Some of your some of your people could come against you and want to kill you. Who did that? Paul. Let's go see right quick. And then we're going to come back. Look right here. We're going to second second Corinthians. Chapter 11, verse 13. Let me put that up here so you guys can see put that on the bottom so you guys can see. So remember, he said boast. Who, who started, who, who said something about boasting himself? Now, people can say, well, he just, he was, a, you know, Paul was, a, um, Paul was a Pharisee. So he knew the Old Testament in and out. He just didn't know what Christ, he didn't know who Christ was until he was blind. But even when he began to know Christ, why would he lie about it? You see, so people can say he's using this word so he can see that, so he can make it seem like he is of the old, the one that God was talking about. He is. Christ, Christ blinded him for three days. You know, so watch this. I, I truly believe it. You got to believe this stuff. Look, for such are false apostles. Was he lying about that? No, he wasn't lying. Look, deceitful workers. No, he wasn't lying about that. It's still going on today. Transforming themselves into the apostle of Christ. Apostles of Christ. That's what you see. People transform themselves into the apostles of Christ. Look right here. And no marvel. Don't be amazed. That's what he's saying. For Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. So people think that Satan is all about gloom and dark. You know, no. It's the light bear. I mean, you know, Satan brings, he's bringing joy. Like he tries to bring joy and then he brings the little comfortness and, and, you know, it, I bring you presents and, 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 and uh, like whatever you want. You're, you're, you know, you can get, he told Christ, 
All you got to do is bow down to me and I give you all this. You see what I'm saying? I, you know, it's certain things. And he wants rules and regulations too. He wants to be like the most high. So look, he going to use what? Watch this. Therefore, this look what Paul said. Therefore, highlight this with a special highlighter. Therefore, it is no great thing if he if his ministers look also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness. They're going to be talking about righteousness. You got to be righteousness, brother. You got to be righteousness, sister. You see what I'm saying? You can't be doing that. You got to do, you know, and wash your hands before you do it. You know, I'm just I'm just keeping it real, people. Look, who's who that's the Pharisees whose ends shall be according to their works. See that? Look, I say again, let, let no man think me a fool. Hey, don't think that I'm a fool. That's what Paul was telling the Corinthians. He talked to the Corinthians, the Corinthians. Those are Gentiles. Watch. Look, let no man think me a fool if otherwise yet still as a fool receive me that I may boast myself a little. Oh, what did it say in Isaiah? That they're going to boast themselves in, in, in the riches of the, you know, basically, you know, they're going to boast themselves. See, hey, this, this is what Paul was doing. Paul was is doing, he's bringing out prophecy. He's, he is the prophecy. <laughs> he, he's becoming a prophecy. Look, that which I speak, I, I speak it not after the Lord, but as it were foolishly. He, you know, he kind of admitted, he said, it's foolish for me to do. You know, I'm not speaking after the Lord in this confidence of boasting. See that? Verse 18, seeing that many glory, look, many glory, oh man, highlight this with one of the best highlighters you can find in your in your pocketbook or in your, <laughs> your cabinet. Hey, seeing that, I got to highlight this myself. And I'm gonna get this. I'm gonna get this bigger. Seeing that many glory after the flesh, I will glory also. That's why, hey, because you know, Paul, hey, he was saying that I will glory also. So you see that right there. And how and how did Paul glory? How did he glory in the flesh? Look right here when he said this. He's talking to Philip Philippi. So he, he would, you know, he would, he would say things like this: circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, about himself of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law, a Pharisee. So he made it known. You see what I'm saying? But then also he started giving praise to Christ. Concerning the zeal, because they call it people zealots back then. Look, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, he telling on himself, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. Because, hey, the Christians who God, you know, who Christ picked, he was picking people, just regular people. He wasn't picking people that were studying the law. He was picking people like fishermen, like, hey, now I'm using you and tell them. And boom, they are, they throw in scriptures. They don't even know how they're doing. You know, Christ is using them, you know, and it's the people you at least expect. That makes people jealous. You see what I'm saying? They've been studying. This is like theology school. Look, this look what Paul say, but what things, look, but what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. So that's what it's all about. So now let's go back. Let's go back to Isaiah. Isaiah 61. Ah, it's slowing down on me. Hold on one second. There we go. So Isaiah 61, 6. Look, but ye shall be named the priest of the Lord. That's what, hey, Peter, Paul, all of them, and all the ones after. Men shall call you ministers of God. Ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles. What you think they were doing when they were going and, 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 and preaching to the Gentiles? The Gentiles, it was, it was like a, a, a shift 
going on, you know. And hey, think about it. If they are, if they, if Greece is already, if Greece came in 332 BC, then when Christ is here, they think about it. They have established control. You see what I'm saying? So now you they got riches and stuff. And now, now the people are, you know, are based that were before. You know, you're in, you're kind of like going, you know, in their laws. You have to do the things that they say, you know, that you can do that's not going against God, you know. And, you know, they got into tribulation and saying you can't praise Jesus and all that. So that's why they started to become persecuted. Look, and in their glory shall ye boast yourselves. That's what he was doing. Yeah, we're going to, hey. And see, that's what people be saying, you know, why are you acting like this? Sometimes when you see the scriptures, you know, you're a warrior for Christ. So you get fired up. You see what I'm saying? And people be discounting the word of God and saying the Christians are this and the Christians are that. You got to stand up for Christ. Don't be ashamed. It's, it's okay to be a warrior in it. You're not trying to fight, but you're being strong in it. You see what I'm saying? So now, I, hey, I'm, I have confidence in this. I just saw this in the New Testament. You see what I'm saying? So look, verse seven. For your shame, that's what comes. People make you feel ashamed. For your shame, you should have double. So he's talking about the people who's being shamed, even in the in, in, in the riches of the Gentiles, the era in the Gentiles, the time of the Gentiles. You still have people that are being set up as 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 I guess you call them chief priests and Pharisees. You know, they still had that. So guess what? In these captivities, they set people up religiously. But they, they're lying. And they're, and they're persecuting the, the real poor Christians, the ones who are, are poor, you know, a poor status. They really want to do well for, for God, but they're being they're being ousted and persecuted. Look, look, now this this talking to them for your shame, you should have double. You're going to get double for being shamed by them. Look, and for confusion, you know how they confuse, they're confusing people. They shall rejoice in their portion. Ooh, the portions of the riches of the Gentiles. Uh-oh. Therefore, look, in their land, they shall possess the double. Everlasting joy shall be unto them. See, Isaiah's letting people know. He let, hey, he letting them know. Just talking to, like Isaiah's basically saying, I'm talking, hey, this word going out to you guys, the corrupt ones. And then for the generations to come, this is what's going to happen. You know, God is sitting up, look, look, right here, look, for I, the Lord. So what Maurice said, no, for I, the Lord, love judgment. I hate robbery for burnt offerings. You know how you rob, you know how you rob the, the like, like today we would say you robbing the worship, the worship church. I hate robbery for burnt offerings. See that? I will direct their work in truth. What is thy truth? People like to say that on the streets. Thy word is thy truth. Look, I will make an everlasting covenant with them. People just think you're talking about the people of God that he picked with Moses. No, it's the people who want to come in to Christ and be followers of Christ with our Christians. Remember, they're going to get a new name now. They're going to get a new name. So he's picking certain people. He's picking a certain seed. People always talk about the remnant. You know, yeah, it's, it's going to be a, hey, it's a, hey, it's a, it's a, hey, this, a, this path right here is narrow. Not too many people are going to take that path because they, it's, it's not viewed popular amongst the nations of people. That's all creeds and colors because everybody want to do their own thing. Look right here, verse nine. Yeah, let's get into it. And their seed shall be known among the Gentiles. Yeah, look, and there, and look, and I'm saying it with confidence, baby. Look, and their offspring among the people. I I gotta say that because I want you to. I, I gotta say it like this. I want you to focus on this. This is important. It's being skipped over. People people are, ch are cherry picking the stuff. Let's get deep in. Let's get into it. You know, let's get into it. Ask these questions. Hey, discount. Hey, if you're saying the Bible is not true, ask the questions on here. It's an open book, baby. It's an open book. Look, and their seed shall be known among the Gentiles. I'm getting excited right now. All praises to the Most High. 
And, and look, and there are offspring among the people. Remember that seed? He's saying seed. He's he making sure you know seed, offspring. Highlight that with a special highlighter. Among the people. Among those people. See, all that, look, all that see them shall acknowledge them. That they are the seed which the Lord have blessed. Because people know the God, the word of God, the words of God. When you really hear it, so you know it. You know it's true. When you all you gotta do is read it. That's why I say it. Don't put too much pressure on yourself. So I know when I read this, it is there is for it's for some, like a few. Because the most high gotta pull, just like he hey, just like Christ pulled those disciples out, he handpicked them. He was picking them. It's the same thing here. You can read it. 70, 80 percent would just say, bye. I don't want to hear this. You know, a little percent would say, I don't like you. And then only a few would say, this is what I've been waiting for. I've been waiting for, you know, the words of God to make sense to me. You see what I'm saying? So, hey, that, those are the ones that he's picking. You can't pressure this. You see what I'm saying? There's, there's no way you can pressure all this. It, it, you know, it, it has to come on its own. You see what I'm saying? And I know that. So, so yeah, that that was... um. So that was Isaiah 61, 1 through 9. I, I didn't put that on there. There it is. Let me put it back on the screen. So now, let's go right here. Because you guys saw it for yourself. The boasting, right? Okay, so now, let's go to the next. Um, let's go to the next chapter. Next chapter. Read, hey, we're going um, to read verse 1 through 3. This is... Um, Isaiah chapter 62. It should, it should be 62. Okay, there it is. So I want you guys, I know you guys saying, well, we're not going into Malachi, into um Malachi in between and Matthew. And we like I thought you said we were going, we are. You got to see the transition of things. You got to see who's bringing it, what prophet was the prophets were bringing that out. And then think about it, if you being at that time before that, you're looking at them like, hey, hey, man, <laughs> I got it. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to act. Hey, Isaiah, you need to be quiet. You know, imagine if you were, you know, they probably were saying, hey, it's not cool what you're saying. Like, how dare you say we're going to go into, you know, captivity, blah, blah, blah. And then we're going to eat the riches from of the Gentiles. Like we are, you know, we are the people of God. You see what I'm saying? Imagine that, like, you know, it, hey, put them in a hole. You know, imagine you coming to a king telling them that, like, I got a prophecy from God, from the Most High, you know? So uh, look, at, look at this right here, Isaiah 62. Let me put it at the bottom of the screen. I'm at the 44-minute mark, okay? So let's go, Maurice. I got to speed up a little bit. So Isaiah 62, 1 through 3. You know, Zion, if they don't know, is Jerusalem. For Zion's sake, for Jerusalem's sake, will I not hold my peace? <laughs> See, hey, look how he's speaking. See, why is he saying that? That's what I just got you talking about. Because he knows it's going to be a hard thing to take. But he got to do it. God, when the most high wants you to bring things out, you know, people gonna be like, you know, they take things a certain way. They look at you, they look at, they 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 bite down on their teeth. They grind at their teeth. I forgot what they call it in the Bible. You know, look. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest. See that until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness. That's what you when we read in this word, it goes out as brightness. Yeah, it might not be easy to take. For some people, it don't, it don't look like brightness, but it is because they're in darkness. And a lot of people don't want you to turn on the light when they're sleeping, right? What people do when you turn on the light and on the room and remind them they're in the dark and they're sleeping, they get mad at you. Look, and the salvation thereof as a lamp that burneth. That's how he's speaking to them. So I, I, I'm, I'm saying I like I'm giving you analogies because you don't know how you you know I'm trying to put you in a certain spot. Look, and the Gentiles, I like that people that come against the scriptures with a special highlighter. 
and the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness, your righteousness, and all kings thy glory. See, Paul was going to King Agrippa. Hmm. Look, and thou shalt be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord shall name. See that? Because when he uses certain people and he bringing people to the light that never haven't been brought there before, guess what? They're going to call you something. Let's see. Let's see what they call the let's see what they call the apostles, the ones that they call. Watch this. Watch this, people. All praise to the most high. I, I, God's gonna give it to me to remember. That's the way it all is it's like that. When he wants you to deliver something, he gonna you're gonna remember where it is. Even when you got a bad memory. See right here. So watch this. Paul A. Hey, Paul and um who came to get who came for Saul? Um Barnabas. Barnabas, Barnabas, Barnabas. Watch this right here. So yeah, we're in we're in the right one. Acts chapter um twenty six. There we go. Look at this right here. So you know we just read. So yeah, right here. This is hey, this, this is somebody speaking to um the king. Look right here. This is Paul speaking to the king because guess what? The the Hebrew Israelites wanted to kill him. I mean, not 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 everybody. When I say Hebrew, the the Pharisees. The Pharisees, excuse me, I messed up. The Pharisees want to kill him. The, those are people of the law. Now, uh, now, I mean, so Paul was a Hebrew Israelite. So, you know, it could be Hebrew Edomites, Hebrew whatever, you know, it's Hebrew Ishmaelites. You know, all of them were kind of speaking Hebrew. And they knew of certain things because that's what the Old Testament was about. Who didn't know? The Gentiles. So, but the Gentiles put certain people in place. So they put um, King Agrippa in place, who was a Hebrew Idumian, which is an Edomite. It's the same verbiage. Look, Acts 26, 26, I'm not going to put it in the, um, the, the thing. So let me take this off. Well, I'm going to leave Isaiah 62, 1 through 3 on, on, uh, at the bottom. But we're reading Acts because it goes along with that. Look, for the king knoweth of these things before whom also I speak freely. Paul saying, I can speak free to him. He's giving me permission. Look, for I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him. For this thing was done, was not done in a corner. It wasn't done like in private. See, look, King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? Don't you believe? Who wrote the Old Testament? The prophets. Look, King, like, look, listen to me. King, King Agrippa, do you believe the prophets? See the question mark? I know that you believe. See, I know that you believe. Because, hey, they, they, were, they were with them in the Old Testament. The Edomites, the Ishmaelites, the, um, um, you know, the people of Jordan, um, the Ammonites, Ammon. Look, 28. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, almost thou persuaded me to be a Christian. Because that's what, you know, that look, that's what it was all about, people. That's what it was all about. So now look, this is what I wanted to show you. All praises to the most high. Acts chapter 11. In verse um, 25 and 26. 
then departed Barnabas to Tarsus for to seek Saul. This is before Saul became Paul. Saul was persecuting the church, but then he started to believe. But think about it. A lot of disciples wouldn't believe that if they see you killing Christians. That's what people are doing verbally today. Saul, and a.k.a. Paul, well, that's why I brought it out. This is what I meant to say. He was a Hebrew Israelite. But he was he was persecuting the churches. <laughs> he was persecuting Christians. But then he became one. But he did. But, he, but they, they, they didn't say Christians yet. This is where Christians just first came onto the scene. So a lot of people would say, yeah, they didn't have they didn't say Christians for Hebrew Israelites back then. But what did, what did the most high say? You would be called by another. We're going to go back. And when he had found him. Because this is what happened when you go into the Gentiles. He's going to use the Gentiles to say what they need to say. He brought, he brought him unto the Antioch, which was in Turkey, right? And it came to pass that a whole year that assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. You think this will be in the word of God, people? See, this is why people don't want to read the New Testament. Yeah, I'm bringing, we're bringing it out today. Look, and the disciples were called Christians. What, people? What did it say? First in Antioch. Where is Antioch? Turkey. Where did some? Where did, Where was Satan's seat? Was when we're reading Revelation. Where was? Where was Satan's seat? In Turkey. So you can see things can be corrupted. Even what Paul has told them. You know, Paul's bringing it out right here is the beginning. But then guess what? Later on, even Gentiles, even Hebrews, like even. Um, 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 uh, Babylonians, whoever it is, no matter what creeds or color, no matter what nationalities, people have a tendency of flipping the script and letting Satan in the colostrum, you know, run, you know, your brain start to actually make, you know, do things that are different from what the scriptures are saying. So that's why, hey, that's why hey, people, uh, you know, all nations would hate you. Because guess what? Christ said they hated me before they hated you because you are not of the world. So they start to bring the world and do a remix with the scriptures and they do their own thing. And then they have robbery too. lucre say money. So they try. They don't want they can't tell. They don't want to tell certain people of the poor that really want you to tell them the truth. There's some in there that want it. But some just want you to tell them what they want. You want you to feed their flesh flesh you can get into skin color you can get into the pleasures of this flesh skin or skin you know colors like i say it can go into a lot of things you know and that's what you see today so yeah i know i'm not ashamed for bringing that out because they're not ashamed <laughs> i'm not gonna be ashamed of christ peter paul and peter passed away and died and, and were, um, martyrs for for the word what we're reading today so, yeah, I mean, so whatever Christ and, uh, and, and the Father, the Most High won't, that's what's going to be brought out today on Spiritual Warfare TV, you know? So, hey, let's go right here. Let's go back. Hey, let's go back now. Let's go back. You got, hey, cry, hey, this day, for the people to say, why are you acting like this? You know, why, why are you doing this? I tell you what, before we go back, look at this right here. What does it say? Spiritual Warfare TV. Why y'all think his name is Spiritual Warfare TV? Look at this right here. Look at this right here, people. Let's go to um, Ephesians six, where I was. I just, I just, I was there, and for some reason, I left. So Ephesians six, people might ask, you know, why do some people bring it out so hard and so, you know, uh, it, hey, it's a, hey, you have warriors, people. You have warriors. Look, 
What you think he's talking about right here? Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all fiery darts of the wicked. That's when you ask people to ask questions, if you don't have faith in the word of God, why don't you have faith? Come to somebody who's asking. So I'm saying, come, you know, come to, come, you know, let's see, let's see why, you know, let's really genuinely see, you know, and in faith and in goodness, you know, you can have, you can be fired up about the word of God. Look, fiery darts, there's fiery darts coming against you. Look right here and take the helmet of salvation. It's like football. Take the helmet of salvation. What you do with a helmet? You, you go on to war. Look, and look, and the sword, why are you talking like this? And the sword of the spirit which is in the word of God. Yeah. So now, hey, not to get off a topic, I just wanted people to see that. Yeah, don't feel ashamed. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's this is what it's about. Because, hey, they coming hard. People, hey, Satan's crew is coming hard. So, hey, you know, you got to come hard, but still have some type of gentleness about you. And that's what's, doing, that's what's going on. So now, that's where we was in verse two, look. And the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness and all look and all kings thy glory so he was going to kings they were all going to kings roman some some went to the rome the kings of rome look and thou shalt be called by a new name by a new name shoot christians new jerusalem i mean all you know in the, in the new testament look which the mouth of the lord shall name if he wanted you to go to the, just name the Gentiles. And now you don't think he's going to kind of say things and let the Gentiles say something that they needed to say. Look, thou shalt, look, thou shalt also be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord, a royal di diadem in the hand of thy God. See that? Let's go to uh, Isaiah 65. Let me speed up. Let me speed up now. Isaiah 65, verse one and two. See, hey, this is in the Old Testament. And the ones that only believe in the Old Testament, you got some believe in the Old Testament, they're not going to want to believe this. They're going to try to figure out some way to say this is not a, a, a talking about Gentiles, which are Japheth. Look, I am sought of them. Look, at it. does this make any sense? Like if he if God is went to a certain people, remember with Moses, you know, and, and get, got them out of Egypt. You know, what we call the, you know, the house of, Is uh, house of Israel. You got the 12 tribes of Jacob. Look, I am sought of them that ask not for me. He's a, a, he, a, he's seeking them that is not asking of him, for him. Look, I am found of them that sought me not. This is what Isaiah was bringing it out to the, to the people in Israel. Can you imagine how they were looking at him? I said, behold, look, I said, behold me, behold me. Look, unto a nation that was not called by my name. Israel at that time was his name. You know, that's why he called Jacob Israel. Also by my name too. Guess, guess what? The word of God. Now, hey, now they're going to have the word of God. Cornelius, Peter to Cornelius. Remember, hey, Cornelius, hey, he, he had to go find Cornelius the centurion. And then they he baptized and they became Christians, you know, like, you know, followers of Christ. Look at this, verse two. Look, I have spread, this is how you know he's talking about, I have spread out my hands all day unto a rebellious people, which walk in the way that was not good after their own thoughts. What I say, people like to bring up colostrum in your brain. When you have your own not own ways and your own thoughts or views, and you think that you are bigger than, than the word of God, then you're gonna have your own devices take you down a road where it's gonna he's gonna let you go into your own way. It's going to be it's gonna be your own destruction. But hey, you we're supposed to pray for that. We pray, we hey, we pray and give, give them time, you know, give people time like you gave us. And we are all men, all men fall short. We fall short. Even in a word, you're going to fall. That's why we got to go back to it. It's a medicine. You know, oh, I got to take some medicine. I don't feel good. That your mind, your mind doing things to you. Let's go to the last place. Last place. It's going to be a part two to it. It's a lot of, it's a lot of things you got to I have to cover. And I know I wasn't going to cover it. We passed the hour. So, hey, I appreciate the one. Hey, I appreciate you. 
Hey, it's just fire. It's just, it's just, it's just, it's just hey, before the game, you get fired up. It's not, I'm not angry. <laughs> so I know most people will see anger. No, it's, it's passion. It's excitement. You see what I'm saying? Because you see, you, you, you know that you, I was, I, I was a wicked and I'm still battling. And you know that he could have easily just dropped you. You could have just, I could have just had a heart, you know, heart attack or whatever before even knowing of him. You see what I'm saying? But he gave you the time. That's blessings. It's not money. It's treasures in the world and in, in your knowledge of, of Christ and, and, and God in the most high, you know. So right here, Malachi. This is this, this is another one, people. This is not popular amongst the people who he said were, were, were rebellious. I mean, if you see it today, guess what? The prophets were probably going through that more, more than like going through that and probably more severe. You know, today they can't throw you in a dungeon and stuff like that. <laughs> you know, maybe I don't I don't know. I hope, you know, I don't know if things would change. But Malachi right here, one, one through three, and then eight through eleven. And then this would be a part one. This is it be the end of part one. Look, what you're reading right here, highlight that with a special highlighter. The burden of the word of the Lord to who? To Israel. By Malachi, the prophet Malachi. Now, this is a burden. What he's about to deliver. You think they want to hear this? Look, I have loved you. Say also Hebrew, a hey, Hebrew descent people. Like I said, remember Ishmaelites, Edomites. They all kind of are familiar with the old. You go into the old text. You read it yourselves. You have them around. You know, sometimes they have the battles. Sometimes. You know, you have some that are intermingling mingling with the other ones. Look, I have loved you, said, said the Lord. Yet, look, yet ye, let you say, wherein has thou, thou lovedest us? He said, but you saying, where, has, where is have you loved us? Where is it where you have loved us? Basically, like, we can't tell, like, I can't tell, you know, like, I'm hurt. That's because you're not listening to them. You're not obeying them. You're doing your own thing. Look. Was not Esau Jacob's brother? He said, don't you, don't you remember that? Esau came out first. Normally the first would get the, 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 reap the benefits. Look, save the Lord. Yeah, I love Jacob. It's just like, like basically saying, yeah, I still favor Jacob. You see what I'm saying? Don't get it. Don't, you know, don't, don't everybody get it twisted. You know, Esau even though he's going to say, hey, and now, hey, look, he's going to say what he's going to say. But if they even came into the fold, they have, you know, if you believed in Christ, boom, it's for you. Look, know, look, and I hated Esau. He just let him know at that time, you know, based on what he done, you know, think about it. If you sell, you know, your birthrights for something, you know, certain thing for like a pot of pottage, a red pottage because you're hungry. You know, look, and laid his mount mountains and his heritage waste. Look, for the dragons of the wilderness. See, I laid it waste for them. You know, there's some people that talk about dragons all the time. It's sy well, symbolic, the dragons on the back. You see what I'm saying? I laid it waste for the dragons of the wilderness. See, that's why we're bringing this out. It's gonna, I, I told y'all, this is going to be tough. It's going to be tough, but it is what it is. <laughs> hey, look, look right here. We're going to skip the number, uh, verse 8. And if ye offer the blind, see, this is what happened. You offer the blind for sacrifice. You be offering your blind, the people, you know, just think people that are blind don't know what's going on. You sacrificing them based off your evil works. Look, is it not evil? So you're going to ask the question to me, but I'm going to say, look, the most high acts, if ye offer the blind, that's what the most high is asking um, in the midst of Malachi, you know, through Malachi's mouth. And if he offered the blind for sacrifice, see Malachi coming hard at him. So you imagine how they acting towards him. Is it not evil? See how he acting them? And if he offer, imagine some people were coming at you like that today, talking on 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 a computer, and you feeling some type of way. Look, and I'm gonna talk like, look. And if you offer the lame and sick, is it not evil? Offer it now unto thy governor, your governor. Look, will he be pleased with thee? Or accept that person, save the Lord of hosts. See, look, look right here. 
And now I pray you beseech God. So you need, and now I pray, I pray that you find, that you search for God. Look, beseech God that he will be gracious, gracious unto you, unto us. See, because, hey, we're all in the pot together. But see, somebody, you know, somebody got to stand up for the truth. Look, this have been, this, look, this have been by your means. This has been by your doings. Look, will he regard your persons? You want him to regard you because you are Hebrew Israelites? Because you are the people of Moses? See, save the Lord of hosts. He don't have respect of persons. Look, who is, look, you got to, he, he wants you to respect his words. Who is there even among you that will shut the door for not, for not, for nothing? See, neither do you kindle fire on my altar for nothing. You don't kindle fire on my altar for nothing, do you? Look, I have no pleasure in you, save the Lord of hosts. I don't have no pleasure when you're doing all that. Look, neither will I accept an offering at your hand. So he going in, man. Look, right here. Now he really about, see, this is the last one we're going to read today. We're going to end with this. And we're going to see how well people take this. We're going to see how true, we're going to see how true you are to loving the scriptures. And then the people on the other side, we're going to see, if you don't believe in the scriptures, we're going to see that you can discount this. Did it happen? Where are you at today? Where are you at today? Who running the show? Who uh, who making the laws? <laughs> Look for 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 uh, for from the rising of the sun because he about to use the sun because people worship the sun. These type of people people worship the sun. They were known for this from the rising of the sun even unto the going down of the same. My name, which is the word of God, shall be great among the Gentiles. No, the Gentiles can't bring out the word. We bring out the word. Cornelius. They started to have the Holy Ghost because hey, Peter had to go. Peter would have sent the dream. Hey, God sent him a dream. And he had to go to Peter. I mean, he had to go to uh, Cornelius, who was a centurion. So, hey, my name shall be great among the Gentiles. And in every place, incense shall be offered unto my name. Some people say, oh, you're getting off on this. What did he say? He said, you're going to be, you know, you're gonna, you, he's going to protect you. Because, see, sometimes it's your people in your own household, house of Israel, that come against you. You want them to be about the scriptures. This is the God. This is the most high. The most high is speaking. We're going to see it at the end. Say of who? Look. So, no. We, I just got to take it. This is the way it is. Look. And the pure offering. So, look, incense shall be offered unto my name in a pure offering. For my name, it, look, shall be great among the heathen. Save the Lord of hosts. That's who's saying it. So how much you love the most high? How much you love Adonai? You know what I'm saying? And, you know, that we're we going to keep it real on spiritual warfare TV because this is spiritual war. Get that stuff out of your head and start worrying about what the scriptures say. You know, because if you don't, your device is going to take you among some place that you don't want to go. Hey, with that, I'll talk to you guys later. Hey, this is what, hey, this is what's being said right here in the, on this channel. At the bottom, the almighty God of heaven is rule of all nations. Hallelujah. That's why he had to bring all nations into the fold. That's why all languages had to exist. Gen Genesis 11 when he when he when he got when he made them have different languages because of the Tower of Babel, right? So who brought the languages to the people? So you don't think the most high know that the languages, you know, what the languages are being spoken? You don't think the you don't think that a certain language can bring out power? As long as you, you know what the real power is, the words of God. No matter it could be written in Chinese, it could be written in uh, Arabic, it could be written in in um Greek. When his words come out, that's the real power. So with that, I'll talk to y'all later. Hey, peace and blessings.